Welcome back to Propel, uh, the weekly inspiration show about what's going on in Chicago with uh, Chicago nonprofits. Today we have with us a guest from the Brown House Experience, and we just finished up our first segment with Tia Brown, who was the founder, and now we have two individuals from the organization that want to share more about what the Brown House Experience is doing in and around Chicago for our young people. Hi, I'm Nicole Scott, and thank you again, Tamara, for having us. And uh, I am the Vice President of the Brown House Experience. And basically, my role is to support Tia and uh, facilitate the workshops that we, uh, the girls have and uh, help facilitate and coordinate all of the community events that we have. So basically, just anything that needs to be done for the Brown House. But the main focus is the, is the girls. And your role in the organization? Okay, hello, I'm Kylie, and I am one of the oldest BBB, so I volunteer at all the events, and sometimes I go to the school. Now, BBB is what? Brilliant Brown Beauties. Brilliant Brown Beauties. Hey. <laughs> and I help at the community events um, with me and my best friend. We, you know, help set up everything and greet people with the signing sheets. Well, we are live right now. Uh, you can call us at 312-738-1060 with questions or comments uh, for the Brown House Experience. Again, 312-738-1060. We are live. So tell us about your experience with the organization and what that name and title BBB means to you. Well, one, they do a lot of hands-on things, so when I do go up to help with the events, um, one, we're always getting messy with something. So there's always a cleanup because we'll do, like, <laughs> balloons with powder filled in them or with cornstarch and all that. And it's always something that the girls can do, and they ask me for help all the time to help, so I'll go around helping them and stuff. So you're like a little boss, so you should be a BBBB. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. A Brilliant boss, brown a boss, boss, brown, oh, brown, beauty, brown <laughs> beauty boss. Brilliant brown, Brilliant beauty, brown boss. beauty boss. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's cute. That is cute. So, uh, so, how old are you? 15. So, uh, at 15, you already have taken on a leadership role in an organization that supports young people in Chicago. How does that make you feel, knowing what you see in and around the community? Well, one, it lets me see that people are looking up to me and what I do. Um, everyone will see. So if I'm doing something bad, the kids that look up to me are going to think it's okay to do something bad. That's right. So I have to always try to stay on my lines so I do what I have to do so they know what to do. Do you have a lot of support in that organization? Yes. A lot of people from my school and from my mother's school, anytime I go up there, it's just... Everyone says, hi Kylie, hi Ms. Brown, what's going on here? <laughs> so what is the biggest thing that the organization has taught you or has changed in you as you've kind of grown up as a part of the organization? Um, that hard work pays off. Nice. Um, you can't slack anything. If you slack for a minute, well, stuff, a lot of stuff will go wrong. Not yeah. go wrong, but you'll miss out on a lot of things. And that everyone's not going to support you, so you just got to deal with what you have and just build on top of that. That is that awesome. That's a great answer. That is a great answer. <laughs> she is professional. Yes. She's a professional spokesperson <laughs> for the Brown House experience. So, Nicole, how long have you, you, you so you one of the founders, right? You, you yes. Have from yes. the ground up. So how many years has it been for you guys? It's been three years. Three years. Yes, yes. and it's been an awesome experience the whole yeah. entire time. <laughs> what has been the most rewarding thing for you in not just starting this program, you're now what other people would consider um, an, an established organization. Most organizations and foundations actually crumble within the first one or two years. For you guys to be in your third year and still have ideas and planning into the future uh, to expand, to incorporate boys. Uh, what is the what is the biggest uh, accomplishment that you've had in being a part of the organization? So um, I think the biggest accomplishment is just seeing how the girls react 
to me. That's the biggest accomplishment. They uh, look to you. They just want somebody to talk to, yeah. you know, or somebody to hear them and understand them. Yeah. So when they get to the point where they can talk to you and they're acting out, and then they get to that point where they're now feeling comfortable coming to you, discussing some of their problems and their issues, yeah. that's the more, most rewarding for me. And that's a know? big change it for is. little girls. It to is. go from being a mean girl with a nasty attitude to actually being vulnerable and to be able to trust, you know, older women in that space, even as a mother figure and as a leader, that's that's when you know that you and are that's creating how, transformation. Exactly, exactly. And that that's the whole point, is to grab these girls who are having issues, who can't control their behavior, who do not have the resources to... Um, to uh, deal with some of their issues, mm -hmm. you know, and we want to give them the tools to be able to do that, you know, whether it's talking now, whether it's journaling, whether it's uh, collaborating and working with somebody on a project, you yeah. know, maybe it's, you know, going with an interest like Air Camp, you yeah. know, uh, anything just to get them to uh, change their mindset and do something positive with all of that energy that they Absolutely. have. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. We are live today mm -hmm. on Can TV on Propel Talk Show with Tamara Holmes and we want your calls 312-738-1060 we are talking with the Brown House experience today about the impact that they're making with young girls in the city of Chicago it's been an amazing opportunity uh, for you guys where do you guys see yourself in the next five years so we basically uh, want to expand of course because we want to reach as many kids in the community as possible so that's one goal uh, we see that by offering like a mobile exploration center where we can come into the schools mm -hmm. and do some of our STEM workshops, shops, our air camp workshops, mm -hmm. um, behavior management workshops um, in the in the school and also giving teachers uh, a prep or a break because a lot of the times me a teacher too as well you don't get your breaks and your preps that you need to plan and prepare yeah. for your students so we would like to eventually offer that and of course the BBB um, boys brilliant brown bowls we want to definitely need to get that up and running so that's uh, coming soon so that's basically where we see ourselves in the future and hopefully some type of community center or location that's nice mm -hmm. I, I wish you guys all the best mm -hmm. what what piece of advice do you have for the little girls, the 11, 12, 13, that's about to walk this teenager path in Chicago. Um, what would you tell your, your fifth grade self? Don't let these boys, you know, whisper the nonsense into your ears. Mm -hmm. One. That's good. Mm -hmm. um, follow your heart. You know, if you want to do something and you stick to it, just follow that dream and work hard because if you don't work hard, then you're not going to accomplish anything. Thank you guys so much for being on the show today. Mm -hmm. I truly appreciate Thank you. all your support. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm so glad that the Earl Star Avion Institute uh, was able to reach out to the Brown House Experience and really get you guys more innovative tools in your tool belts to help reach the young people on the South Side of Chicago. We hope to see more kids being engaged and accepted for who they are uh, and not just their grades. And so we know that aviation and aerospace education, and now you've experienced firsthand through air camp right um, that there's a whole lot of opportunities within the aviation industry that's not just for the a type you know 4.0 pilot but it's also some kids out there that can do some amazing things and be a part of an industry uh, and community uh, that they've been uh, left out of so thank you so much how can uh, our viewers today get in contact with you okay so you can visit us visit us at our website at the brown has experience um, dot com. Uh, we also have a Facebook and Instagram page at the Brown House Experience uh, and our Twitter page at the Brown House 7. So please check us out. Feel free. Contact. Comment. Anything. We need all help we can get. <laughs> well, thank Nicole you. and BBB, <laughs> Kyla, thank you so much for your time. <laughs> we truly appreciate it. We're going to take a quick break and I want to share with you uh, this video that uh, truly outlines the work of the, the Aerostar Avion Institute, our story, and how we literally got to be uh, where we are today because of uh, my passion and my vision to see young people soar. Today's interview is very special to me because I'd like to believe that we both have a lot in common. 
yeah, Travel has personally allowed me to inspire people both young and old to see the world with a different set of eyes. To believe that there's more to life than just what we see in our immediate neighborhoods. Because if you can believe that, then you can accomplish anything. My guest today is a black female pilot working to diversify the field of aviation by teaching minority kids to soar. This is just to kill time and give me a break. You got to get the logo in the back. Oh. You want me to take it? Right now, oh, yeah. what we're looking if at you don't in the aviation industry is literally uh, you for uh, a crisis. If it's too bright, take it off. Yeah. 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 Oh. Uh, in aviation, especially careers as pilots. Tamara Holmes is a one-woman powerhouse. Her company, Aerostar Consulting, gives kids the hands-on training and mentoring needed to help them become the aviators of tomorrow. Aerostar was birthed um, basically out of necessity. So the company uh, first started as a for-profit. I worked as a contractor for uh, and a consultant for the Chicago Department of Aviation. And they were looking for women and minority contractors to work on airport planning projects. And uh, I looked around and there was not enough minorities and women who had, avi and women who had aviation companies uh, in Chicago, servicing the Chicago Department of Aviation. And so I looked in the mirror one day and I was like, I'm a woman, I'm a minority, I need a business enterprise. And so Aerostar Consulting Corporation was found at that time. Our programs are amazing. And uh, one of the things that we really have become known for is our consistency in programming and longevity. Our programs run year round, um, so they don't stop. So kids always have an opportunity to be a part of an Aerostar's program. Whereas most aviation programs are strictly summer camps, summer programs, or one-offs on the weekend, maybe Saturday flights, or introducing kids to aviation. Our programs are very strictly uh, curriculum based with experiential and project based learning so uh, we're actually giving kids graduated content uh, so that once they move past introductory level things they also they also have an opportunity to uh, grow their skill sets in uh, flying uh, drones remote control helicopters rc aircraft um, we have our own flight simulators we do all type of uh, industry-based projects. We did an entire project on a missing Malaysia airplane. We did another project on aerospace engineering. We did another project on the future colonization of Mars and interstellar space travel. So it's not just aviation, it's aviation and aerospace infused with STEM uh, concepts, which are science, technology, engineering, and math. Tamara says that while travel allows us to expand our horizons by learning about new cultures, the field of aviation provides a special way of seeing the world that many of us take for granted. It's not just them being able to transport themselves to another part of the world, but it's also all of the different things that aviation brings right to them. Uh, we take it for granted that we were able to have fresh fruit, fresh produce. We're able to, you know, rock the latest fashion or get the hottest technology. All of that stuff actually comes on aircraft uh, through air cargo. It's actually fed into their lives through an entire logistic system that wouldn't exist without aviation. And so being able to expose kids to um, uh, the world through the exchange of not just um, culture but the exchange of products the exchange of uh, intellectual capacity the exchange of being able to um, design and build and work in an industry that translates across um, across the globe is very important her ability to inspire by giving wings to dreams and turning potential into purpose is why her program has helped countless youth over the years even i was inspired to throw caution to the wind and take a ride in my first piper arrow I want to thank everybody for watching today. You can catch me online at thelovefoodandtravel.com. And to learn more about Aerostar's aviation program, you can go to aerostarcorp.com and click on programs. So thank you guys so much uh, for tuning in. My name is Tamara Holmes. We are here with Propel Talk Show, and I am your host. 
Call us right now. We're live 312-738-1060. And we hope that you just enjoyed that piece by a uh, blogger. Tiffany, who actually does a blog called For the Love of Food and Travel. She featured the Aerostar Avion Institute and uh, just was captivated by our work and our story. And today I have with us also one of my students. Uh, she is currently an intern with Aerostar and uh, she's been hanging with us all summer and last summer as well. This is her second year. But we are very proud to be able to uh, say that we have been providing life-changing opportunities to Praise with regard to her vision and mission to become a pilot. Praise, you want to introduce yourself? Yes, my name is Praise Wright. Um, um, I'm interested in you know aviation. I want to be a pilot. I'm um, working towards being a pilot right now. I just finished with... Oh. Don't, don't, don't go into what you just finished with because we want to say that little tidbit oh. uh, to talk about in a second. But kind of share with me and with the audience how you came about finding out about the Aerostar Avion Institute and how has that changed your trajectory? Okay, well, my mom found you, I think it was about two and a half years ago, on, it was either a radio, either the radio or the TV, and she, she was looking you up on Facebook, and you responded immediately, and the first trip we went on was the, um, the girls in aviation at United Airlines, and just from, just from seeing, like, how you interact with kids and how much you cared and, you know, the passion you have for Aww. us, I was just hooked right away. And I just I had a I didn't know how real my passion was for aviation until I met you. So, are you serious? You're gonna make me cry like on TV? Yes. Oh. <laughs> this is real. <laughs> so um, I'm so happy. Praise is a rising uh, junior in high school. Uh, we've been working with her senior. I keep making her a baby. This is I'm getting old. She's a rising senior in high school and uh, looking forward to her career in the Air Force. One of the biggest things that I am so proud of you for is being able to kind of manage uh, all of the things that you love, um, your dedication and wanting to be a part of the organization and grow uh, your commitment uh, to the organization and want to uh, volunteer. And tell me how important is it for young people to really chase their dreams and not just sit back and wait for somebody to ask them to become a part of shaping their future? Um. I think it's very important because I know so many kids, so many kids who don't believe in themselves enough to follow their own dreams, don't like feel like their dreams are reachable. And I feel like just being here in this program like shows that you could you can do anything you put your mindset to, not just aviation but anything in life. A lot of kids don't believe in themselves, so it kind of takes a lot of courage to do so, but I feel like it's just, it's good for kids to know that you can do anything you put your mind to, no matter what it is. And how have you activated that in your own life? How have you put to action what is in your mind? How have you done that? Um, well, for me, it was kind of hard at first because yeah. I didn't really believe in myself as much. It... You know, I didn't believe that I could do what all these other kids are doing, you know, flying planes or playing basketball or just anything. But you have to really believe in yourself. And once I found it, it took me to a whole different level. Once you have that self-motivation behind you, you can pretty much do anything you want to do. What about not just having self-motivation, but having a support system, right? Yeah, support system. What uh, does that look like for you? For me... Um, well, without a support system, I really wouldn't be anywhere. Aww. So, it, having a good support system is key. Um, having Aerostars, my mom, and... Well, we want to show you a couple of photos from where Praise just came from. Uh, Praise is wearing her United States Air Force shirt. And uh, thank you to all of our servicemen and women. Uh, she is an aspiring Air Force pilot and through an amazing opportunity, she just came back from three weeks of 
pilot training at 17 years old. Uh, I wish I was flying airplanes at 17 years old. So you actually flew an airplane? Yes, ma'am. I flew Piper Warriors uh, about every day I was there for three weeks. And what, what was that like for you, knowing all up until you left three weeks ago, I want to be a pilot, and now every day you fly in airplanes? It was surreal. Like I've been around aviation, but I haven't been able to go into an airplane every day and just learn, been able to do virtual reality flight simulators and learn from all the cadre being there and just the flight experience has just been amazing. What was your favorite part about the camp? My favorite part, well besides the flight time, besides flying every day, my favorite part was being able to go to the Air Force bases and actually being able to see what my future could be like right. in a couple of years and being able to meet all the cadre and all the different military airplanes. Some things I can't tell you is classified, but it was amazing. <laughs> I'm so jealous. It's one thing that you did that is on my bucket list of a lifetime. And I cannot believe that you got an opportunity to do this. Can you share what that experience was and how that was a game changer for you? Um, what was the aircraft? It's a KC-130. Okay. So one day we were... <laughs> so I'm so mad about it. I'm... Go yeah, ahead. Yeah, so me and the students, we usually go to the Air Force Base. Um, some of the days we don't have to do studies, but we were at the Air Force Base this day, and we were just uh, looking at some of the aircraft, and we went on the KC... What is it again? KC-130. The KC-130. Sorry, I keep forgetting. But I didn't really know about the aircraft until they showed us. So we're in the aircraft, and all of us are lined up in the seats, and out of nowhere they say, buckle your seatbelts, we're getting ready to go. And so we're all just losing our minds. Like, we, we didn't know what to expect. Ooh. And as we're in the air, we didn't know, but, like, it was about five or six F... It was five or six F-15s pulled up in formation, and we were just losing our minds. Like, I don't get excited over five celebrities. Five or six F-15s pulled F up? F-15s pulled up, and we got to refuel them. The um, boom operators are showing us how to refuel them. We were in, like, just the whole aircraft. We got to see uh, the pilots and the different um, people. On so, the wait airplane. a minute. You were actually in an airplane that was giving gas to other airplanes. Yes, we <laughs> refueled in the air. It was amazing. Mid-air refueling is Mid what it's called. I show my students this video all the time. It takes incredible skill and just so crazy jealous that she got a chance to see it. Look like we have a caller. Caller, are you there? Uh, hello and uh, good evening, young ladies. How are you doing? Hi, how First are you? All, What's your name and what is your question or comment? My name is Steve, and let me commend you. You're doing a wonderful job with these kids. I wish there was more people like you that would do that. See. Everybody's not out there slipping out of cars or selling things or, or whatever with a gun in their hands or That's whatnot. Right. You are doing a wonderful job. And another thing is our people. Listen, back in the day, I'm older than y'all guys, you could go to Meigs Field and you take a, a helicopter ride. Fifty dollars back in those days, wow. and it's so beautiful to get in the air. And we used to dream about flying, but now we're seeing more black people as doing it. I'm proud of you, young lady. Get in the Air Force. You might be a commercial uh, flyer. You never know what you could be. The world could be anything that you want to be. But again, the main question is this, because high schools are steady closing up. Why do you think kids won't go to school. They don't want to go near school. That's why the schools are closing up. You don't have no but a few people in school. So listen, let me get out there because I know you're about to get out. Yes. So I, I can hear your response. And thanks for taking the call. Thank you so much for that comment. I truly appreciate it. Um, 
students like praise. Uh, we have so many of these testimonials and these wonderful stories of uh, how our programs are impacting and changing lives. You want to know more about the Aerostar Avion Institute, you can follow us online uh, on Facebook at uh, the Aviation Academic Initiative Pipeline. Uh, you can find us on the web at avioninstitute.org. That's A-V-I-O-N institute.org. Thank you guys so much uh, for tuning in tonight. Uh, praise. I couldn't be more proud of you and being one of our first guests on the show uh, really means a lot to me as my my little shadow and my intern you, and my mini me and my assistant uh, but thank you so much for just wanting to support and be a part of the next generation of building uh, aviators and you already wanting to give back so thank you so much for that um, if you want to know more about resilience partners and the work that they're doing in the community reach out to www.resiliencepartnersnfp.org for more information again you can uh, email us at aai at avioninstitute.org and we would love so much to hear from you uh, with the work uh, about the work that we're doing and how you can be a part of helping us change the narrative in Chicago. Again, my name is Tamara Holmes with the Aerostar Avion Institute and uh, this has been the Propel Talk Show. Thanks so much for joining us today and we appreciate your time. See you next Wednesday, 6 p.m on CAN TV. Good night.